Hi there, it's Mark and welcome to episode 9 of Adobe Photoshop for Photographers, our series of video tutorials aimed to improve your Photoshop skills with a photography bias. And today we're looking at composites and we are looking at Blendif. Now when I first talked about Blendif in the dizzy heights of episode 1 I think it was, I said that I would show you how you, if the images are right, you can blend things in less than 15 seconds or, or something thereabout and that's what we're going to do today we're going to take our time and show you and teach you about it because we'll be using a few different blend of techniques but in essence that's one motorbike that's the other motorbike i want them on the same picture i'm going to use blend if i'm going to learn about why you blend different gray why you blend different different colors Control t don't want them in the same place Stick them to the side there where are you counting I don't think it was quite 15, but I was explaining at the same time. How good is that? Anyway, we'll be using this to replace skies. We'll be using this to do exactly what we've just done. And if the picture's right, I'll show you where we can do that in three seconds. Does that whet your appetite? Well, go and get these pictures. They're in a zip file on my website and the link's down below. I'll play the titles during which you can... Um, Oh, you could press the subscribe button. It's really, 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 really good. You feel good. You get the little bell pops up and you can tick on that. You can show your kids. And yeah, you can say, yeah, I subscribe to Mark. Why not? Go on, get the pictures, get cracking. Okay, let's get started. So we've got this picture and we want to add into it this cyclist here so let's just click drag position of the other tab and before we release press our shift key so that it puts it in the middle now that is directly over the other cyclist so let's move it so load the opacity so we can see what we're doing control or command t command t on a mac control t on a pc and just give ourselves some some space put them about there and then press enter and bring this back up so that is where he's going to be and we just want to get rid of all of the stuff around him without doing any selections and that's where blend if comes in double click here to get our layer styles box up of which we only want this piece here blend if you can also call it up by clicking on the fx tab here and you'll find blending options pop up in one of the uh, menus but double click to the right does it for me now blend if can be set for color or gray currently it's in gray and that's where we're going to use it so it's based on luminosity when it's in gray you have a slider for each of the current layer the layer that you've selected the layer style on and a slider for anything visible in the layers below and the idea is you slide these from left to right and what they do is on this layer if you slide from this end you are starting to hide all black values now this starts at zero and goes through to 255 so it starts at purest black to purest white and as i slide this along you can see it's starting to hide some of the black which in itself might be a good effect i'm actually going to hold down my option key or alt key on a pc and double click in the middle to break that apart to give you a more graduated gentle effect that's how you would control it. We probably won't have to do much control on this one to tell you the truth. So this is hiding the black more progressively. This end hides the whites. And if we keep going down to about 128, which is the midpoint between zero and 255, that's 50% gray. So what we're effectively hiding now is everything that is 50% gray or lighter in our layer. So we're taking away, we're hiding those values. But if you look carefully at his helmet, you'll see we start to get rid of some of the things in his helmet now. We're just starting to get rid of some of them now. I'm going to hold on my Option key or Alt key on a PC to split that to feather this a bit more bring this back and I'm going to stop it 
there because I don't want to take too much away from this guy. And yes, we've got bits down here to tidy up, so let's do that. Click OK. Let's take a mask on. B for brush tool. D for default colors. X so that black's a foreground color. And just hide those with a mask. And there we've done it. Now, this can happen, this effect on the helmet. So how are we going to deal with that? Well, the easy way to deal it, deal with it is to take that bit away from blend if. And you do that just with the lasso tool. And just make a lasso shape around the helmet or the place where blend if has not been your friend. Click on the picture, control J to take a copy of just that bit as you can see. And switch blend if off on that bit. And there you are, we've plugged it back in. So how easy was that? It doesn't take very long at all. Let's do a different way. Get rid of that, get rid of that. I'll leave that position there. I'm gonna get rid of blend if. Now, this next thing it can be done in two or three seconds. And it only works because basically we're taking advantage of the lighter sky and that is to change the blend mode to multiply or darken what that does and we've seen this in a uh, previous episode it compares pixel to pixel from this layer to the layer underneath and it does something based on that comparison in this case if it is dark the darker pixel wins so whether the dark pixel is here or here whichever one is the darker wins and the bike clearly wins so it's going to show through over here though we've got a problem because the sky was darker so this the darker bits of the sky win and because we've moved this to one side we've got a line well let's just be for brush tool we've still got black i'll make a brush a bit bigger and let's just sweep that out there you are so because of the nature of these particular pictures we were able to do it just by changing a blend mode and that is the version that took just three seconds yes i had to do a bit more to tidy up but in essence it takes three seconds just to line the layer and slip it slip it into darken mode all right so that's blend if using uh, gray let's do a version and i'll need to go and load the other two pictures that we haven't got so uh, give me a second to do that i'll be right back we'll do a version with blue okay so we've got this picture of the badger bar which is between ample side uh, to the right and Rydal uh, to the left in the Lake District and I want to get rid of some of the blue and put in more clouds so I've got this picture here which again we should just click drag and drop I'm not fussed about where it goes command T I'm just gonna move this up till we see the blue here the hill comes down and there I just want to make sure that I mask past mask didn't mean to say mask I want to come past those so there and I'm going to press enter and let's call up blend if and we change it this time to blue so in the blue channel and we used the top one previously this layer and we saw how it made invisible so we made the anything lighter invisible by coming in from this end and anything darker invisible coming in from this end this time we're going to use the underlying layer so we're looking at the picture of the badger bar and we're going to make visible so if i move this from this end it makes anything visible on the lighter side of the blue and makes anything visible from the darker side which is our buildings which is our hills which is our trees and we're sliding along i'm paying close attention to what the fringing looks like on there i'm not worried about the chimney stack just at the moment and i think there we're starting to lose it at that point there where the blue's starting to come back in so i'm just going to take it about 170 ish 175 will i get a more control if i just split the slider out and just feather it a bit Oops, too far. 
perhaps just a little bit and click OK. And if you look how close, if we zoom in up here, I'll just drag that across, bear with me. Look at the selection. How good is that? Control or Command Zero without making any selection. That is really good. It has impacted a little bit on the colour of the, the building, but that is sometimes inevitable. Remember how we got around it previously? Well, what we can actually do this time is uh, stick rather than cut things out using the lasso tool, let's just stick a mask on there, B for a brush tool, D for default colours, X to get black as a foreground colour, and let's just paint on there to bring some of this back where it may have crept over just a little bit into the building. We can be rough and ready, we can even get our brush a bit bigger as well. As long as we stay below the roof there, we're fine. And then if we do before and after, there you go. Now I deliberately chose this one as well because it also had blue in it as well. But if you've got a nice expansive sky, whether it's cloudy and you want to make it a different colour, so we'll use your luminosity type thing, or whether it's blue and you want to put clouds in, there you go, uh, blend if. With that, I'm going to stop, go and have a coffee, I suggest you do too, and when we come back we're going to do a proper composite with a few components from different pictures. Right, coffee calls. The eagle eye amongst you will have noticed that coffee was quite long considering the clock up in the top right hand corner here has uh, jumped forward in time somewhat, but there you go, you sit down, have a coffee, watch a movie, and I think, oh dear, got to finish this, and we will finish this. We've got two pictures here. We've got this young lady jumping in the air for joy. And do you know why she's so joyful? Because she has actually subscribed to my channel. You too can look like this if you subscribe to my channel. But moving swiftly on. Let's grab a hold of her, take her up here, and release. Control T, just to get it a little bit smaller in the frame. Then we'll just have a quick look at something. That something is, when it comes to doing composites, you've got to consider the perspective, the luminance, the colour, saturation and shadows. Now we're not going to cover all of those in this. There'll be some other separate tips that I haven't gone through on other videos before. And the reason for that is I'm going to link above now to a video I've got called Composites in Photoshop, which gets a bit techy in parts, but it's methodical if you want to follow through and really nail getting perspectives and shadows and everything right. First and foremost though, uh, perspective and lighting makes the difference. Control T, right click and clip horizontal. This won't work because clearly the lighting is coming down through the trees, casting the shadows Everything's lit on the right side and dark on the left side. A picture like that wouldn't work. The lighting's the opposite way around. So you're onto a, a non-starter there. So one of the obvious things to get right is to get pictures that match the light fall or be ready to adjust the light fall. And we're going to do a bit of both. So we've got a match. I'm going to have a bit more bent like that. I'm going to reduce the opacity why we decide where we're going to put her now the horizon line to measure up in the forest is there you can see the horizon line her horizon line there isn't an obvious line for this but it's usually about mid rift if you've got a portrait and you're standing taking the picture so we're going to put her there press enter and I think she's probably the right size in a frame for that, if not a bit too big actually, control T, I'm just like, just remind you. And press enter. So that's where we're gonna put her. Now, the job of cutting her out. Well, we've seen this before in previous episodes, so nothing new. Let's just hit W for a selection tool. It doesn't matter what tool that calls up either, could have been any of the ones in this group. We're just gonna go select subject. And let Photoshop do its thing. Now I can see it's a gap between the fingers there. 
um, some of the hair at the side gap between the fingers at the top it does need a little bit of addressing so I'll now click select a mask my preferred choice for select mask is to have it on this view here called overlay you can choose whichever view you're more comfortable with uh, using but for the sake of uh, my comfort I'm staying with this one just darken the flip a bit more here is our select refinement tool and all I need to do really is just brush it slightly in the places where the selections just missed and you see that we'll uh, we're fixing that selection we can always go back and tidy things up and a little bit on the hair here sticking out the side want to get that back in as you can see we've done that and the top of our head looks a bit iffy doesn't it so let's just uh, pull the refinement tool over the top and just in the palm of the thumb and hand there okay it could be a little bit better you can spend a little bit more time on it there's still a bit around the fingers and that but you're not really going to see them don't sweat it we're going to output to a selection and when you have that selection we're now just going to click on mask if you've got a selection already prepared what happens when you click on a mask it inherits the selection so there we are we've got our girl roughly in the right perspective for this picture against the horizon line and we've placed her we're now going to do a quick color match we're going to do a few things on colors but a quick color match here so if we go to image adjustments and match color the source to match the color with is this document and the layer to match against this layer is our background now that looks lovely doesn't it so I'm going to click on neutralize to neutralize the colors a bit more and then we are going to have a little bit of a play here to get this right so I think uh, for one I think luminosity needs to come up well let's wiggle the slider shall we that's clearly not right and that's probably a bit too bright on the white don't worry about the actual color just yet so I think somewhere about 150 that'll probably do me the color intensity well let's wiggle the slider black and white I think somewhere middle ground about 130 and fading so what's fading do no effect whatsoever from the match color to complete effect from the match color so we want to find a place where we think there's a happy medium and i think it's going to be around about 50. yeah we'll go for 50 and we click OK. Now I haven't made smart objects of this, so I'm actually going to commit this. Um, if you want to change to a smart object, and we covered that in a previous episode, you can do and you could come back into this match color. But for now, I'm just going to go OK. OK, so we've done a bit of a, a match color. Now what I think the obvious mistake here, not mistake, obvious thing to do is there's a lot of greens in here and a lot of the reflected light from there is not picked up in her now especially with it's with her wearing uh, white so i want to add a little bit of a green tint to this so if we look at color match which we've looked at previously or the color balance and here we can sweep between um, the various uh, colors cyan to red magenta to green yellow to blue we've seen those opposites when we've looked at uh, adding curves less and almost forgot what it was it adding curves less and such when we've done a little bit of color grading on previous ones so let us have a look at the greens first I want to get more green in this do I want that much I don't want that much but while it's there it's just maybe noticed that it's doing the entire thing and we don't want the entire thing we want it just on her so what do we do we clip the adjustment layer so it only affects what is in the layer beneath which is her now obviously we don't want her that green so I'm going to bring this down somewhat 
to round about about 19. If I just switch this off and on, yes, it's adding a little bit more of a green uh, tone into her. And I'm actually going to take some of the blues out and introduce a bit of yellow. Sorry, the other way around, take a bit of yellow out and introduce a bit of blues. And do I want all of the reds? I actually think probably want to take that down just a nudge. Somewhere around about there. So that's my subtle colour grading to actually get a bit more of the green type colour in uh, to her as a picture. And now we've got to do something about uh, the shadow. She's currently not casting a shadow, so we want to create a shadow. So let us click on a new layer, call it shadow. And control click our mask or command click. And you can see it brings back the selection. Now with that selected, if we go and call up our bucket tool, which is over here, paint bucket, black is already our foreground color. Let's just click there and there's the shadow. <laughs> Control or Command D to get rid of the marching ants. Now, it's not that realistic a shadow. So you're telling me, so Command T, we're now going to shape and move and sculpt the shadow or control T and I'm going to flip vertical and I'm going to bring the shadow down to where it would be if it were an actual reflection it would be somewhere about there I'm just going to zoom out so we can see this it would be somewhere about there if that was water reflecting but the light source is coming here so I'm actually going to move it back a little bit and then also going to squish it so I'm holding down my shift key while I move this tag and that way it keeps it in this one plane and I'm going to take that to there and then right click inside to distort this I'm just doing this all this by eye I'll bring this out there's no right or wrongs here would be artistic and so I think a shadow something like that would do. Change the blend mode to multiply because currently it's a black blob. Control zero to get a full screen. Currently it's black blob and you can't see what's underneath it. So we're just going to blend the, the pixels in with what's underneath with multiply. Or dark. And then I'm going to reduce the opacity. So we're starting to get there. But I need to blur it. So let's go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And how much blur do we want? Now that would be fine if she was higher. So there's lots of sun coming around, which is taking the hard edge off the shadow. But she's not that high, and it is quite strong. So I'm going to go somewhere around about yeah, somewhere around about eight or nine for now. Again, I could make it a smart object, but I'm not going to. One thing, however, though. The shadow will fall off notes how it's dark here and it gets lighter here so we want to do a similar thing making that fall off just gonna try a different uh blend no we'll leave it on darken uh, yes yeah, so we want this to fall off so let us put a mask on there and let's put a gradient on the mask because remember black hides white reveals so if we get a nice gradient going from black to white then we will sweep across the shadow so G for our gradient tool or rather the group which contains the gradient tool currently it's the group has the paintbrush in so we're going to choose the gradient tool we've got a uh, basic black to white and linear gradient and if I now click and sweep across 
you see I've done it the wrong way but I always get it the wrong way that's just a case of control Z and doing the other way that's gone too far so what we need to do is try that again I'm gonna take that to there now what I want to do is while I'm on the gradient you think I've, I've spoiled that but while I'm on the gradient I'm now gonna choose sorry now I'm on the mask of the gradient I'm going to lower the density and you can see how that's filling in now quite nicely it's showing a, a stark of contrast here where our feet are closer and then it's it's fading away so with and without the shadow we have that now the other thing I've noticed and we've already pointed out is how dark things are on the left hand side not so with our model so let's do something about that I'm just gonna move that density up a little bit more down a little bit more I mean let's do something about that so let's get a new layer and call this one body shadow well body darkness really now I want to take a brush brush bigger brush make it quite big I want it nice and soft and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just brush down the side now see how the brushing is going onto the spilling over and as it is because we're not bounding it by anything so control Z control Z instantly I'm not pressing on too hard with my pen and um, the mouse would actually press on much harder insofar as it just sticks to whatever the the, the flow is from the setting up here of flow and opacity up at the top control D control Z uh, but with my pen I can actually just do this very lightly and introduce that but I still don't want to spill over the side of a ribcage there so I'm putting darkness on that bit of tree which should naturally be as is shown light so I will first click command or control C again to call up the selection now then if I brush out here it's not going to go anywhere because it can only work inside the selection but because it's a soft brush I don't need to go inside the paint I can just come close to the edge as you can see here we're adding a bit of darkness in just by being on the edge so I'm now using this brush just on the outside so that the feather of the brush itself is what's coming in now I'm going to dot inside the face across our chest a bit more and a bit more down here and possibly just the underside of the arm there and just little sweeps in here to exaggerate the shadow coming through a little bit big again there we go control or command D to get rid of the marching ants before and after we're starting to match that up you can play with that a little bit more you can also change uh, the opacity of this and you can also try changing the blend modes to possibly darken or multiply so so far we've gone from that which we've just placed our model in place to something like that which is starting to look a little bit more realistic and that's more or less where I'm going to leave this one because I have linked to a more comprehensive video as well but I would suggest going through this one actually first but what we need to do to blend these together to introduce a common look and feel is to do a simple bit of color grading which we've come across before and that is with color lookup where's it gone there it is and in color lookup I'm going to use a uh, soft warming I think I'm going to change the blend mode to a color before and after it's a little bit too strong so bring it down but what it's done the job of doing is introducing a common look and feel across the color matching the same way as I was trying to do with the greens when we did our, our color balance here 
but this is across the whole picture and that's it so that was uh, a before and after complete obviously you'd spend a little bit more time on it you could you could have used smart objects to go back in and tune some of these but that in essence is it so the important things whenever you're doing a, a, a composite is to make sure you either get perspective right make sure you get the luminance that's the overall brightness make sure you get the colors matching including the saturations and also where appropriate shadows that's it i'm going to put my pen down and uh, ask you to subscribe once more so you know what to do there's a button bloody bar we've gone through 400 which is great thank you very much by the way yes uh, we were at 390 odd for ages now we've gone sailing past 400 uh, all heading in the right direction so thank you and episode 10 is where we're going to start wrapping things up so the last version except for a possible q a of adobe photoshop for photographers will be our next one episode 10 so if you've got any comments or further questions, anything you want to make sure I can throw them in on the last one, do so. This one's been a little bit long. You've also got some homework videos to watch, but uh, I hope you've enjoyed it so far and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.